Hello little fluff balls. You're on the termite mound, which makes me think mom might not be here. Hello, goodness you've got big. It's okay, little ones. Look at them, they have got so large. Where is your mum? Ooh. Ooh, egging each other on, are we? Look at those little faces in the grass. Not quite brave enough, I think, with mum not here to come all the way to me. You can come, you can come over here if you want. You'll get to smell my perfume for this morning, which is petrol that I poured all the way down my thigh. Hi, little kids. Where's your mum? They're getting to an age now where I feel a bit more comfortable about sitting with them. I feel as though their instincts are a bit more honed, they're a lot more aware, and their muscle control is a lot better. I no longer worry too much about something happening to them if they come out to say hello to us. They're almost completely spotty now. now they really have grown up in a very quick way. And that, of course, is due to the exceptionally good quality of mum's milk. Vicky, you wanted to know how long a hyena will nurse for. It actually depends on the rank of the hyenas. There's recorded cases of up to a year and a half, which is an exceptionally long time. And even for the lower ranking hyenas, which obviously have less access to food and therefore um, obviously can't produce milk for as long or maintain that level. We're just gonna stay for a few minutes if mom isn't here. It's irresistible. Where are you two going? Where's your mum? But even for low-ranking mothers, they will feed them up to eight months. The hyenas will start, the cubs will start to eat solid food at the same time, but that suckling will continue. That's an exceptionally long period of time. It's one of the reasons why people have suggested that female hyenas are so big. And speaking of size, Daniel from Scotland, you say these cubs are so big now. They are, how aren't they? Look at them. You can actually properly see their spot patterns, which of course will stay for the rest of their lives. <laughs> I'm bold, I'm bold, I'm bold. You are definitely the braver one, you're also definitely the bigger one. Little munchkins. Well, the good news is they look well fed, because I've been a little bit worried about Ribbon, because we haven't seen her here in so long. But they look fine. Little rotund bellies, they're growing nicely, they don't, they're full of energy, they're not weak, so my ribbon is coming. Oh, goodness! Charging forward! And hello to Rebecca, and good morning. Rebecca, you say that hyena kind of run like giraffe. And you say you guess it's the neck. Oh, that's my head in the way. I'm sorry. Let me... Oh, too much movement. Sorry, cubs. Uh, Rebecca? So, giraffe, you, you are right. There is a sort of a lope to them. And it you were right in the sense, in a way, that it's the neck. It's basically animals with sloping hindquarters. So with much smaller bums, basically, than shoulders. And you'll see that, that that proportion is very much heavily in favor of the front end of the animal rather than the back. And that's why you get that lope. In hyenas, that's why you get a crosswalk. So when you see a giraffe either. But what you do see when hyenas walk is they often use the same limbs on the same side, which is the same thing giraffe do. So typically, when a leopard walks, for example, the right front and the back left will move at the same time. On hyenas and giraffe, the right front and the right back will move at the same time as well. Hi guys. I don't want to stay for too much longer. I feel like our presence here is encouraging boldness in a way that it might not otherwise be. And now you're getting very far away from your den site. Where's your mum? Come on, Ribbon. Giving you a couple more minutes to come here, otherwise I'm going to leave. And 
And there we go, John, you want to know how much danger these cubs are in being all alone. I actually don't think too much. Hyenas do have one of the highest success rate in terms of raising cubs. And usually deaths of cubs is often connected to other hyenas rather than um, something like a lion or a leopard. However, I think that they're doing this exploring regardless of whether or not I'm here. But they do have the den site right there. I also happen to know, because I've been listening to the Game Drive radio and I've just circled this entire area, that there's no lions about. A lion would be the biggest threat to them. I haven't picked up on any leopard tracks either. But even then, I'm going to give it another minute or so and then just, just leave them and come back later. Hopefully Ribbon makes an appearance. She's probably already been here, just to spite me. My one worry is just when they run it, they, there's always this impression that they might fall over at any point. And there we go, another question about cub rearing from Dr. Rob. Dr. Rob, you want to know how long before... here they come. Come on, you two. Before they start hunting and scavenging with the clan. It depends, again, on the rank of their mother. Higher ranking mothers will, at a communal den site, be the ones that bring food back for the cubs. They'll drag food back to the den site. That's not to say low ranking females won't, but when you've got a shared den... here we go. <coughs> See, even the slightest noise, they're alert enough now to be safe about things. Because that was just, that was just a rustle, it was just a bird taking off. <laughs> but you're looking at around about 10 to 12 months, they'll start moving out with mum to go towards a kill. And then after that, they become more and more independent and then leave the den site completely. They'll still come back and visit, though. It's gorgeous. All right, we're going to leave these hyena cubs as much as it pains my heart to do so. I don't ever want to do anything to compromise them. Fortunately, we've got eight legs combined with two animals. Let's go over to eight legs in one animal.